Welcome back. This week we're going to go with an ISO or a Slate Drake Nymph. Um, ISO is short for a long Latin word with a bunch of letters in it. And I'm not going to embarrass myself and try and pronounce it. I can't speak Latin. Hell, I have hard enough time speaking English sometimes. But um, So for the rest of this video it will be the ISO or Slate Drake Nymph. But what we're going to do with this one, because this nymph is a very strong swimmer, when it's active in the water column, it is, it's moving. It's a, it's a fast swimmer. So we're going to give it that swimming motion naturally with the hook. And all I'm going to do here is, you know, you watch the, we did a tying tips a while back on bending hooks. All I'm going to do is just give this a quick upward bend and that's going to be it right there. It's just going to give it a, by itself, just looking at it, it's going to look like it's a swimming nymph. Uh, you can buy the hooks that are, you know, they have the two bends to them. Um, I don't find it really necessary. I just took a this is a Diariki, wherever the hell I put the package at. It's a Diariki 270 size 14. Um, that's what I go with for this. You can go up to a 12 as well if you want, but the 14 seems to do pretty well for me. Um, next one I'm going to take here is just a move us back a brown ostrich plume. And this is going to be for the tail and the body, but I'm going to tie them in in two separate steps just to make things a little cleaner. So I took out three of these plumes here, or yeah, three of these hurls, and I'm just going to kind of prep them. You can see right there we go. You kind of get that. They have three distinct tails. If you go searching under the rocks, you find one. They're gonna, you're going to see these three tails that are very distinct. Now, I don't think that it's... When they're swimming, I don't think it's a distinct three tails. So you could get away just tying this in all as one clump if you want. But, I don't know, I, I think it looks sexier on the vise, so I tie them this way. That's not going to look too sexy if I leave them like that. So just go ahead and get these tied in. And because we're going to be tying in more materials, just go ahead and clip those right now. It's going to be easier to work with. If you're a really good fly tire, which mm, I fall short of that mark, you can keep all of those in and still make a good looking fly but that's not the case with me. I have to cheat. So we're just going to spread these three tails out and if you want to there, show the camera. Uh, I can't see shit because the brown tails on a black vise but we'll actually just take this out. You can see it against my shirt. There's the three distinct tails. If you want to you can take your thread and work through this. You can go around it and it'll lock those tails in place a little bit better. But like I said, when they're swimming, I don't think those tails are distinct. So I'm not going to take the time and do that just so it looks good on the vise and good enough for the camera once it gets in the water. Hey. I don't think they're focusing on the tails anyhow. So we're going to take some extra small silver wire and just throw this in, run it all the way back to where the tails begin and just throw a quick hook in here. This was a 
we used to target this hatch a lot when I was in Pennsylvania. Um, kind of the same thing as the October caddis, you know, I mean, by Pennsylvania standards, this is a big fly. So fish got pretty opportunistic, pretty aggressive when they were around. And we used to try and target these. And it was always a, always a fun hatch to fish. Never saw a ton of numbers. But we, we did catch our fair share of fish on this pattern. Well, similar patterns, I should say. It's a very distinct, very unique looking nymph. Uh, some of the hex, the, the green drakes are like this, to where the back half is, the back half's wider than the front. And if you take a look at one of the naturals, it's because they have these real distinct gills on the back side. I don't know if that helps them swim or what it is. I could never really get a straight answer on what those, uh, what, what the purpose of them was, but I just knew that it was a very distinguishing factor. So for that reason, we're going to use these ostrich plumes. I'm going to retie them in, help build our taper, and just take it right to the bend. I mean, this is very simple as far as figuring out where your proportions are going to be. Take this right to the bend, we'll half hitch, and take these plumes and just one wrap right in front of the next. And you'll see as we go along, just like when we did the October a couple of weeks back, this is really going to give the imitation that we're after, these gills that are on the back half of the fly. This ostrich does a really good job of imitating that. So just one wrap right in front of the next. Get this out of the way. Now, this is the portion of the fly. If you don't follow any of the anything else on this recipe, this is the portion of the fly that I think is the most important. This has a white line on the naturals going right down the back. And it's not near as thick as what this is here. It's, you know, I mean, it's probably about as thick as this wire on the naturals. Over exaggerate it, make it thicker than what it actually needs to be because I feel that this is a trigger point. This is something that the fish are able to distinguish that, you know, it just pops out at them. Oh, that's you know that's a lot like what I'm seeing so they just go right up to it so over exaggerate this and this is just a white turkey bile and I'm going to tie this in going right down the center and I'll flip this over once once I get everything secured if you want to with this as well, you can go um, two brown and one black on the ostrich plumes. Um, I don't really think it's necessary. I don't think that the color of the nymph is going to make or break you. Um, if, as speaking from experience, you go this is back when we were really fishing these patterns a lot. This is the, this is, I thought I cracked the code with this. This was my ISO nymph dubbing. It was a Antron and black and just a big mix. I thought that's what it was, you know, just so happens I caught a couple fish that day and I'm like, oh man, that's, that's the exact color I need. And I made a bunch of it and, uh, no, <laughs> not the case, but like I said, if you're going to follow anything on this recipe, follow the white line on the back. That's the most important part of this fly, in my opinion. And you're just going to take your extra small wire and run this right 
to the bend nice and easy uh, find some junk scissors here the the wire pretty much disappears in the in the ostrich from underneath you can see I mean it's it's all but gone and I'm gonna pick this stuff out a little bit more but you can there's the there's the back that we're looking at right there um, a nice thick profile for that white line that we're looking for and then we have two more things to tie in with finishing we're done now I go even a little bit wider with this one right here I'm going switching from a turkey biot which you know I mean they're longer uh, longer fibers maybe toward the end of the video I'll compare and contrast the two they're longer fibers but they're not as wide the goose bots are shorter but wider so I used the goose bot for the front just tie this in from the tip Take this all the way up to the front and then you're going to be working on an upward angle for the last of this. So when you're fishing these flies, um, you can dead drift them, that's fine. But I found that it's most effective if you're dancing these things, if you're moving them on your own. Because like I said, they are strong swimmers. So move these flies I mean don't be afraid to twitch them don't be afraid to swing them uh, at the end of your drift whatever it may be just keep them active I've, I've found that I've gotten more more fish that way than just a straight dead drift and this half hitch is really giving me a really fighting me on this so we're going to take just some brown SLF spiky dub, we're going to throw it in a dubbing loop, and get our taper how we want it, I'm actually going to take just a shade more. camera here and if I zoom out I got more to work with there we go so we're just going to take this and build our taper before we throw it in the loop finer at the top wider at the bottom just build that up throw this in here And keep this relatively loose. I got more than what I needed, but it's all right. It's easier to take away than it is to add it. Work your way to the back. Go right on that bend, so you're gonna have a nice continuous transition here. You're not gonna have any gaps. And just work this right up to the front. Boy, I really got carried away with this dubbing. That's all right. right in front of your eye. Actually, I'm going to throw that back in the cradle. Right in front of the eye, trim your dubbing off. We're going to wind up picking this out just a little bit, so it doesn't have to be perfect. Now fold your goose biot over, and you'll see once I flip this over, you're able to see the top of it, that it does get just slightly wider, but I mean there is no mistake in this white line going right down the back. And like I said, I think this is the most important part of the fly. Go ahead and whip finish this. And one more thing here. 
Just kind of tone that down slightly. But there you go, we have it still all the way zoomed out. But come into focus. There we go. You can see, I mean, it's a very distinct white line going right down the back. Like I said, over exaggerated. Don't worry about it being too obscene, obviously. You don't want your entire back completely white. But don't be afraid to make it a little bit more obvious than what the naturals are. And that should do it. There you can see you have the nice swimming motion to the fly. Um, and be active on these. Be active. Don't just dead drift it. Make sure you're moving this thing throughout the water column. Um, they are swimmers, so, and it seems like the fish will trigger on the ones that are on the move more so than the ones that are just dead drifting. But, as always, any questions, leave them with me and I'll get back to you. But thanks again for watching, and we'll catch you on the next fly.